Hello everyone, it's Nick Lawson with CDC Take Charge Software and today we're going to look at displaying and controlling data views in a browse in a one-to-many set. If you've been following in the blog you know that several weeks ago we did a lesson on how to display data from multiple tables on a form that was not attached to a set. So today we're going to do the opposite. I've had some requests from people that say they've created sets and they get the data to display based on the initial link but when they try to take and filter and query that data to display some other way uh, they can't make it work correctly. So that's what this lesson is about. To demonstrate it we're going to look at our utility program. Now once again if you've been following along you can see that our application has changed once again. We used to have three panels, source, tag files, and target. Now we have just two panels, source and target. To replace the tag files, the source uh, display or window will do the work, and I'll show you that here in a second. But in order to take and have a utility program, some basic things have to apply. We need to be able to open folders and files. So let's say I want to open downloads. I simply double click it, and there it is. We need something to tell the user what's a folder and what's a file. So we use color coding on the uh, browse display to take and make the folders green and the files black. Also, we have a type column which also says folder and for the files it either says file or application if it's an executable and URL if it's a web page. Okay? Now in here Let's say, uh, as a utility, I want to rename a file. Well, I have code samples 1. Well, there is no other code samples, so let's take and change that just to code samples. I select it, I remove the 1, and then all I have to do is click off of it, and it's done. Now, if I want to see that that actually occurred, let's look at another utility we have on our utility program, which is our run bar. So if I take and copy out my address and I paste it on my run bar or I could have just typed it in and then click run it's going to open the windows uh, window for that folder and here it is code samples used to be code samples one now it's just code samples so what occurs in our application actually affects the physical files on the hard drive um, which obviously is what you want it to do if you're having a utility package. So I mentioned that we could take and use the run bar and not have to double click. Also I can navigate backwards by double clicking on the two dots or if I want to go to the root drive I can just click on over here under drives and it'll take me back out to my main drive. Pretty simple. Now let's go back into downloads and we're going to take and look at changing the name of several files. Here, if you're an Alpha Software developer, you know that if you have a table, it has many support files that have the same name. In this case, we have a table called day header or day HDR. So we have a CDX file, a DDD, DDM, DDX. We want to change the name of all of those. So I'm going to range all of them, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to tag them. Now watch what happens when I tag the files. It puts a check mark in the tagged line for us. So I have affected the values in the browse with X basic code, which is one of the questions that I'm addressing. Now we're going to display or change the view of the browse, process the records, and then redisplay it with the changes. I'm going to do that by clicking my rename button. Now watch the screen. Notice that it queried down the list, displayed just the records that were selected, then as it changed each one, it dropped them out of the display so that the user can see that the work was done. Now this is a cool feature because it eliminates a tremendous amount of code that we had in the other package which would take and display our source bar and the variable text showing the user what's going on. All that's no longer necessary because it all takes place right within the browse because of the code that is affecting the values that are in the browse. Pretty cool. 
The same thing works on the copy and the move and the delete. Uh, and because of the way it's set up, on our old application, you could only work from source to tag list to target. Here, if I was to move these files to my temp folder on the C drive or a different external drive, and I made a mistake. Well, in the old application, you would have to navigate the source to the target where you move the files, change the target to the source that the files came from, and then rerun the command. Now you simply just take and tag the files that you want to send back and do the reverse action, and away it goes. Saves a ton of steps for the user, and it's much appreciated. Now let's go out and take a look at our application. Now, there's way too much to cover in the way of looking at all the code and everything. So if you want to see how all this is written, I want you to go to our blog, which is cdctakecharge.wordpress.com. It'll all be spelled out, and you have to take and copy it and paste it into your own application, modify the names, and use it as you want. But let's take a look at the set while we're here. Our set is called TC Desktop. So if I right click and I go to Set, you can see we have a file manager, and then we have a source table and a target table. The source is linked by an ID field, which is a value of one, and it's a one-to-many link. The target is also linked uh, on a one-to-many link. Now, <clears throat> let's look at that one piece of code that we did on the rename all, so you can see how that works. So I'm going to come down here to my form, go into design mode, and let's open it up. <clears throat> okay, so remember, you, we arranged it and tagged it. So that was one step. We'll look at that code on the blog. But once it's tagged, here's what took place to rename the files. So we go to the on push event of our button. And it looks like there's a fair amount in there, but a good part of it is just error trapping. Um, Okay, so we have to set our variables, select file, and then we determine how many records are in the list. Then we build an array um, and uh, by pointing to our source table and finding all the records that are selected. Then uh, we use our array to step through, fetch the first record in our browse, and then just use browse fetch next to go through each item in the array. When select file equals the value of start in in our browse then we take and perform our action which is set our new file name uh, then we use the function alpha software function file rename and we take and rename the original file to the new file name then we set our selected value to false now what this does because that browse is queried down as a subset of records from our original uh, uh, selected records, which is the ID value 1, then it drops out of that list and it automatically redisplays with no additional work. I put a X basic wait for idle to make sure it's done renaming the file. Then I do a browse 1 fetch next. And then I go to next when I get to the end of my list. I recommit the records on the uh, browse. Then I take and rerun my query showing all records based on the set query of values that have an ID of 1. It redisplays. I push button 37, which on here is that button right there, which redisplays all the records uh, in our window correctly. That's it. The same thing works if I'm working in the other direction over here, only it would be working off of this button. So there is a lot to see on this new form, and uh, all of it has to do with affecting data views and controlling uh, what the user sees in their window. So I encourage you, if this is a problem or an issue you're having, go on over to the blog, watch the video again, and uh, read through it, and then feel free to copy and paste and use the code any way you need to. Thanks again for stopping by, and have a great day.